A man consumed a two-week-old baked potato for dinner. This is what happened to his brain. PD is a 36-year-old man presenting to the emergency room with slurred speech and blurred vision. He mumbles to the admitting nurse that he knew something was wrong when he felt air moving through his guts, but what actually came out wasn't air. PD was a new prison inmate. He was instructed to save food scraps from the cafeteria. Another inmate was using these to make pruno in the toilet of his cell. This prison wine was forbidden and could lengthen the sentence of everyone involved, but they didn't care. It helped keep things at peace in the facility. They'd save up oranges, grapefruits, and canned fruit so they could crush them up and filter the juice through a sock. They'd mix it with hot water from the sink into a plastic bag. Every day, the brewer would burp the bag, releasing gas made by the microorganisms as the mixture ferments. Hiding it from the guards, he'd heat the bag under hot water from his cell sink every day. This communal effort gave inmates something to pass the time, but one day, something was wrong. The master brewer got an idea. The cafeteria started serving baked potatoes. Starch is sugar, and sugar is used to make the wine, so adding these potatoes would help fermentation go faster, he thought. The master brewer inmate told everyone to start stashing these. When it was time to make some wine, he'd peel these with his fingernail to make his batch. These would get saved up for weeks. One evening, PD didn't eat enough for dinner. When he was supposed to be sleeping, he looked at his savings to eat. All that was left were baked potatoes from at least two weeks ago. Despite the smell and the taste, he ate it and washed it down with a cup of prison wine that he had saved that was also made from these potatoes. In the morning, PD noticed something was wrong when his mouth felt weird. He would try to stick his tongue out, but it felt like the muscles in his mouth were stiff. It seemed like his throat was closing up and his breath felt hot. At breakfast, he thought he had to burp, but much more than just air came up. He wasn't sure if his vision was doubling, but what was doubling was the liquid exiting his body because it was coming out of both ends. When the jail physician arrived, they examined PD. If the food in the cafeteria suddenly changed, causing him to eat things that he hadn't had for a while, all of this looks like an allergic reaction. The physician noted that another inmate down the hall was experiencing the same symptoms. Looks like this is environmental. They didn't know about the two-week-old baked potato and didn't know about the prison wine. PD was given some diphenhydramine, Benadryl. Allergic reactions happen because of a release of histamine by white blood cells. This is a reaction by the immune system because the body detects and reacts to something that it's not familiar with. Histamine dilates blood vessels, causing swelling, explaining PD's throat closing up. It causes low blood pressure, causing him to be dizzy and lightheaded. Diphenhydramine stops the body from reacting to histamine, stopping the allergic reaction. And it should work for PD. He swallowed the tablets, but he had trouble doing that. As the day passed, PD noticed things on the far side of his field of vision were doubling. He could feel pins and needles in his hands and feet. He started choking on his spit on the floor in his cell. He begs for one of the guards to call for help, but his voice was weak. The jail physician realizes that something is happening as PD is brought to the emergency room where we are now. At examination, the medical team notes that PD is slurring his words. He tells them about a two-week-old baked potato that he ate for dinner. The prison guard mentioned that his voice was much weaker than normal, and doctors find that his breathing was shallow, but they couldn't hear any noises from his lungs, so it doesn't seem like he has any blockages or swelling in his airway. What they did notice was that PD had a lot of gas. The air that he was producing and releasing was so foul and enough to prompt the nurse to give him some liquid to help relieve it. PD sips on this mix, but over the next two hours, he can't finish it because he can no longer swallow. He can't tell the nurse about this because he's now unable to speak. PD tries to communicate with the team in writing. They notice that his eyelids were drooping. Typically, when light is shined into the eyes, the pupils constrict so that it limits the amount of light entering in. This reflex indicates that the brain and the nerves are intact, but when they shine a light into his eyes, his pupils are very slow to react. When they ask him to move his eyes, they notice that it's easy for him to look right, but not left. When they look at his throat, they find that it's not swollen at all, but rather 
it looks like the muscles there are paralyzed. At 48 hours after eating and drinking a two-week-old baked potato, PD is no longer able to breathe for himself. The medical team saw this decline happen. They put a tube down his throat so that a machine can breathe for him as he's admitted into the intensive care unit. When they send him in for a scan of his brain, it returned normal. Nothing was wrong. Given that PD's breathing isn't due to an airway obstruction, that his movement and his speaking are both impaired, and that the muscles of his eyes were weak, all of these are controlled by the brain. But if the scan doesn't show anything wrong with it, then what's happening? The brain and the spinal cord make up the central nervous system. It's responsible for the senses, which were intact for PD, demonstrating again that PD's brain was intact. So something else is happening somewhere else. His problem is acute in nature. He's not experiencing a chronic neurodegenerative disorder like amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, since that takes more than two days to happen. PD's weakness was symmetric, meaning it was the same on both sides. It developed from his eyes and his throat to his chest, then from his arms to his hands and his legs to his feet, something called a descending pattern. Ascending pattern is one coming up from the fingertips up to the arms and from the feet to the legs. That's something that can be seen from some heavy metal poisonings like thallium. This means that his problems could be just his nerves, but which nerves? You can't say it's just one or two of them because all the way from his eyes down to his feet on both sides of his body, are paralyzed, covering a huge number of nerves. It's unlikely that all of them are failing independently at the same time. Moving up, his spinal cord is fine, and that's controlled by his brain, which is also fine, and that leaves us with the muscles as the problem. Typically, if muscles are physically damaged, they'll leak contents into the blood, and the resulting proteins have a tendency to collect in and shut down the kidneys. Muscle damage like this doesn't always come from a physical insult. It can come from eating the wrong things at the wrong time, like a moldy old potato. But PD's blood test results don't show that his kidneys have shut down, meaning that his muscles aren't physically damaged, and they're aren't really any muscle problems that'll affect the eyes, the throat, and the respiratory muscles together. So this isn't a problem of just the muscles. If his brain, nerves, and muscles are all fine independently, then it means that maybe a combination of these is the problem. If the connection between PD's brain and his nerves was damaged, that can cause paralysis. This happens in polio and West Nile, both of which are infections, but PD didn't have a fever. He had no signs of any infection. The remaining place that something could be wrong is where the nerves connect to the muscles. Muscle contraction is a deliberate and motivated function. The brain originates and sends the command, and the nerves facilitate that signal. To communicate with the muscles, chemicals called neurotransmitters are released in this space. Sometimes the part of the muscle that receives the signal is damaged, caused by the immune system, but PD doesn't appear to have that inflammation. Other times, the chemicals are there, but they just can't be released. This would happen because something from outside the body is causing it. This means that it's being caused by a toxin. And the toxic illness that would be associated with a two-week-old baked potato is botulism. Down the hallway in the hospital, another prison inmate was admitted. This was the inmate that the jail physician told PD was experiencing the same allergic reaction symptoms that he was experiencing. But the hospital wasn't done admitting inmates. Within 24 hours, six more prisoners were admitted into the hospital from the same facility, all of them presenting with signs and symptoms of botulism. The state public health authority was notified when PD presented to the emergency room first, and when these additional cases followed him, they knew this was an outbreak. To avoid being in a position where you'll need to eat a two-week-old baked potato, you can play it safe and healthy by ordering from this video sponsor, Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. They offer delicious, flavor-packed options on the menu every week to fit a variety of lifestyles from keto to calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and protein plus. Food prep and variety is tough for me, so I get myself a box every week, but I also get Factor for my dad. He's getting older now and sometimes isn't consistent with portion control, but he gets factor now and loves it. In any given day, I know he's eaten 
what he's eaten, and how much. Every week he tells me which meals to select for him for the delivery. He really likes Factor's keto meals, like this chipotle rubbed pork chop. Not only do I enjoy the meals, this is my lunch every day, but it gives me peace of mind to know that my dad is eating healthy and portion controlled. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code EMU50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next box. That's EMU50 at factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. We highly recommend it. Botulism is caused by botulinum toxin, which is a protein, one of the most potent known toxins in humans, meaning that the smallest doses can be fatal. But what does this have to do with potatoes? Well, botulinum toxin is made by a bacteria known as Clostridium botulinum. The problem with this is that this bacteria is everywhere. It's prominently found in soil. Knowing that potatoes are the part of the plant that grows underground, then it means that they're covered with Clostridium botulinum. But why doesn't everyone who eats a potato get botulism? Well, the bacteria doesn't always make toxin. Actually, it needs to be in very specific conditions to do it. Warm, moist, low oxygen, low salt, low acid, and low sugar all need to happen at the same time for some time. But when we're looking at a baked potato wrapped in aluminum foil and stashed away in a prison cell for several weeks, that is all those conditions at the same time. The problem is, when the state health department asked the jail cafeteria what kind of potatoes they were preparing, none of them were wrapped in aluminum foil. When the prison guards found more potatoes in the cells, they tested all of them, and none of them had botulinum toxin. Eating a two-week-old potato is kind of gross, but it doesn't appear to be the cause of PD's problem. The brewer inmate used a sock to filter the prison wine that he made. Prison guards found this sock in his cell. It was still moist. They sent it to the laboratory, and when the test returned, it was positive for Clostridium botulinum. The prison started asking all the inmates about this. They promised each one that there would be no punishment if they admitted to drinking prison wine. One inmate who had some wine but wasn't admitted to the hospital told the guards that he took a small sip from this batch and immediately spat it out because it was repulsive. The reality is, Pruno, this prison wine, looks repulsive, but this inmate told them more. Multiple batches were made by the brewer. It just so happened that the wine in this cup that this inmate spat out was the one that was made with a two week old baked potato. No other batches contained this ingredient. Knowing that potatoes have clostridium bacteria and spores all over by default, and knowing that the fermented mash is low oxygen, low acidity, low sugar because prisons sometimes deliberately make pure sugar very hard to get in order to prevent this from being made, then this gave the bacteria from the potato an impetus to produce botulinum toxin. Pruno is not allowed to be produced in prisons, but saying that isn't going to stop people from making it. There's videos that will say that there's a risk of botulism when producing something similar at home, and it's right, but foods that might have botulism range from vegetables that have contact with the soil like garlic and chilies. But remember, those vegetables need to be in an environment that would cause the bacteria to make the toxin. Often, if this does happen, it's when foods get canned incorrectly, or when they get fermented incorrectly. Other times, this has appeared in certain fish and meat products, and mysteriously in gas station nacho cheese. It's important to remember that this bacteria is everywhere, but it takes very specific circumstances for it to make toxin, and these circumstances are rarely sustained for long enough to accumulate enough toxin. For PD, the medical team had taken a blood test when he presented to the emergency room. By then, they had already suspected botulism based on what the jail physician had told them. Before the results of the test returned days later, they had administered botulinum antitoxin. This is supposed to help mitigate the problems that come with getting botulism. It cannot reverse the damage that's already been done, but what damage would that be? Botulism is a neuroparalytic syndrome. Given enough time, the body does eventually clear it all out of the neuromuscular junction, allowing the nerves and the muscles to communicate again. Botox is botulinum toxin, and you'll see this is why people need repeat administration of it. The problem is, humans cannot last for days without being able to breathe, which is how botulism is fatal. It suffocates you. Modern medicine has been able to solve this by sticking a tube down the patient's throat so that a machine can breathe for them, but long-term damage from botulism is something that modern medicine can't fully solve just yet. Once the toxin clears out of the neuromuscular junction, that connection is usually fully intact. Most of the time, 
there isn't any long-term problems, but not moving for several months causes a different set of problems. Muscles shorten, they atrophy, extensive physical therapy is needed, and patients can fatigue easily. Sometimes patients will have trouble breathing like they did before they got sick and will easily get shortness of breath. Other times there's other long-term effects, like in this case, one of the eight patients continued to have double vision for at least a year afterwards. All of this means for PD and his fellow inmates, the treatment after antitoxin is supportive care. The machine will breathe for them as the toxin slowly clears out of their neuromuscular junction. The intensive care unit can fully control most every vital function of the body to treat any symptoms that they may have during this time. All of this costs money. When it happened in 2011, the state taxpayers footed the bill of half a million US dollars. With the way that this reads, you tell me if that's just the hospital bill. And then additionally, the secure transport of these patients to the hospital, correctional facility monitoring while these patients were admitted into the hospital. Let's be real, I don't think they could have run away if they really had botulism. And of course, all the health departments who were involved in the investigation, those people could have been working on something else in lieu of this as an additional cost. The lesson here is to be careful when you're processing foods yourself. The bacteria that makes botulinum toxin is everywhere, but it needs to be in the right conditions for a prolonged period of time to make the toxin. Nothing wrong with baked potatoes. Baking in the foil and leaving them out for a long period of time could cause problems, but in this case, it wasn't eating the two-week-old baked potato that caused Petey's problem because it wasn't wrapped in foil, but rather he drank prison wine made with a two-week-old baked potato. And the fermentation process allowed the clostridium to make botulinum toxin. Botulism is rare. When it happens from commercial products, it always sounds kind of funny, but what actually happens afterwards isn't funny. Luckily for PD, with supportive care, after 58 days, he was able to clear the toxin out of his neuromuscular junction. At 11 months after this outbreak, he did still have some weakness and trouble swallowing that got better over time as he was able to make a full recovery. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.